Monday. Happy New Week to you there through the 16th of June, 2014. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good Monday morning. Thank you for being with us. Hello there. <laughs> Hope you're doing well today. Yeah, on today's show. Who's on today's show? Thank you for asking. Finally. We have uh, Bailey Harrell. She is from the Habitat Restore. Yeah. And man, she gave a great interview and she really did. talked a lot of details about what Habitat does, how involved it is in the community, and how folks can get involved if they wanted to. She is, you're right, she's very knowledgeable about the Habitat and what the Habitat program is all about. Mm -hmm. She also, as I understand, explains the, uh, the, the housing program. Right, there's a misconception yes. about the houses that are, that people get through Habitat for mm -hmm. Humanity, and she tells details of how someone is eligible mm -hmm. and then what happens when they purchase the house. That's right. You know, back in a previous life, when I used to do, a, a, I had another uh, position there in broadcasting, uh, people would, uh, I heard people w thought that Jimmy Carter was the head of Habitat. He wasn't. He just helped out. Right. Uh, also, that it was a free program, giving things away. It's not that at all. No. And you're right. Misconceptions abound. Well, Bailey gives a lot of good information about that. Outstanding. And then, of course, we have Sergeant uh, Paige Lernard here from Crime Stoppers, and she's here asking for your help. Great. That's it's crime great. of the week. Yes, yes. It's your chance to uh, make a little money there. You about know, you're a, helping to up solve to $1, crimes $1, up to $1,000, possibly. That's right. All right. Outstanding. Well, today is indeed June 16th. It is indeed a Monday. It's the only all Monday day long. Week, thank goodness. Yeah, all day long. Uh, this day, 1909, a fellow by the name, anybody that's, uh, that understands or knows anything at all about aviation history knows the name Glenn Curtis, one of the pioneers in, in uh, aviation. Well, he sold his first airplane this day, 1909. Of course, the Wright brothers, had, had, uh, they were already flying. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Selfridge uh, you know, died in the first plane crash, 1908, right. an Army plane crash. But uh, Curtis uh, finally opened his business, opened his hangar, and sold his first plane this day, 1909. Uh, he delivered the gold bug, that's what he called it, to the New York Aeronautical Society. And while doing so, he picked up a check for $5,000. I and bet that was big money back in was. those days. 1909 was quite a chunk, $5,000, a lot of money. Also this day, 1963, again, anyone who knows or has any uh, uh, aviation history, uh, knows that Valentina Tereshkova, mm -hmm. the 26-year-old Russian, uh, was the first female to orbit the Earth. She went around three times this day, 1963, in the Vostok 6 craft from nice. Russia. Russia. Yes. Dobre utro, by the way. You did good with that. Yeah, thank you. I You've have no idea what it means. I think I just while. ordered lunch. <laughs> Is that <laughs> what you did? <laughs> <laughs> okay, birthdays today. One yes. of my buddies. Who's that? Crash Craddock is having a birthday today. Uh, from the Greensboro area, Billy Crash Craddock uh, did the song. Of course, a lot of people remember the song, Rub It In, Rub It In. <laughs> but he had a whole bunch of other stuff as well and uh, had the pleasure of being in his company quite often in the Greensboro area. He loved my mom. Yeah, he and my mom nice. were buddies. Yeah. But uh, he's doing quite well at the age of 75 today. Uh, Joan Van Ark yes. turned 71 today. Can wow. you believe that? Laurie Metcalf, she was on Roseanne. Mm -hmm. She played Roseanne's sister, Jackie. Uh, she's 59. Uh, wrestling fans, uh, or I should say wrestling fans. Wrestling. Wrestling. People who enjoy wrestling know the name Warrior. He was born this day in 1959. That makes him 55. Doesn't rumble quite as much as he used to. <laughs> If he does, he does it a little slower. Yeah, I'm sure. Birthday today, he's 55. Arnold Buslo is uh, was Vincent in The Quest, and he was Habib in 24, the TV show 24, mm -hmm. Habib. He's 52. Uh, Phil Mickelson, the champion golfer, is 44. Frederick Keller, or Fred Keller, of Mr. Mom, he was Chip in Kate and Allie. Yep, He played Chip. He was Andrew in uh, 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 One Kiss Before Dying, or once a kiss, Oz a kiss, is a kiss, something like that. Anyway, he's, <laughs> he's 39 today. And today is the birth anniversary of one of my favorite actors, Stan Laurel of Laurel and Hardy. Oh, yeah. He was born 1890 this day. Arthur Stanley Jefferson was a Brit. He was born in England. And just uh, one of the funniest people you'd ever, you could ever imagine. He was one of the, uh, he was, he played the simpleton, but he right. was the brains behind many of their routines. I'm uh, quite sure. Stan, uh, Stan Laurel, uh, they did over 200 movies together. He died in 1965. So wow. funny, such a talent. 
And boy, could he dance. People didn't know he could dance. Well, he, he didn't showcase that quite as much. He didn't showcase it. Yeah. You're so right about that, but uh, one of my favorites there. Anyway, uh, today's his birthday. All right, what else do we well, have? Well, guess what is this Saturday? Uh, it's the day after Friday. Yes, it is. Just Does this guess. give you a hint? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Hey, uh, we're going to go rolling down the river. <laughs> yes, we is are. Yes, we're rolling down the Noose River. I was only joking Good around. guess. Thank you. Yes, it's Cruise the Noose. That event is happening this Saturday through Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. All right. We've got folks that have registered that up to 90 and 100 kayaks and canoes will be going down a channel down the Noose River. They will, it's a guided tour through yeah. Parks and Recreations, oh and they'll boy. stop for a picnic. And oh, boy. It's going to be a fabulous day. Last year, they had about 90 or 95 folks participating, so we're excited about that. We'll talk right. about it a little more once the event has happened, but that's this Saturday. If you want to find out more about it, give them a call at Goldsboro Parks and Recreation. This is a big event. It certainly is. A lot of fun. Well, let's go find out what Miss Bailey Harrell has to say. Have you heard what's happening at Habitat for Humanity? Well, joining me today is Bailey Harrell. She's the Restore Director, and she's here to give us some insight to what's happening right here in our community. Welcome back to the show, Bailey. Thanks for having me, Kim. I'm happy to be here. We always love hearing about Habitat and what all's going on and how the community always plays such a part in the success of Habitat. It's nice being in a county where I feel like the members of our community support us so fully, whether it's, you know, volunteer help or donations at the ReStore. It just it makes us feel connected to the community we live in, so it's really great. For sure. Well, I'll tell you, I went in the ReStore recently. You all do such a good job, number one, of keeping it organized, but displaying all the different things that you have from, you know, things for your kitchen to mm -hmm. sofas to large TVs. So, I mean, it's amazing what all you carry I'll in tell there. you what, it's a constant battle because product is constantly coming in and changing. So and you we never know what it, you're getting. Exactly. <laughs> so we want to make it look really stylish and kind of warm and inviting so you can see what it might look like in your home. That's so right. it is. It's a battle, but we've got some new operations team members in place and they're really doing a stellar job at keeping things fresh and organized, which we all appreciate and I hope the customers do as well. That's, that's wonderful. <laughs> Can you tell the community if they were interested, say you're moving or you're doing some spring cleaning and someone wants to donate something to Habitat, what's okay. the best way or best avenue to, to what go? What I would recommend is you can call our phone number, 919-736-9550, and you can speak with one of our associates or ask for a manager. What we normally suggest is that if you have a large item or a number of large items for pickup, we get your information, address included, and we see what we have available because we run our truck two to three days a week, depending, and we can schedule something based on our availability and your convenience. And then we set up a time and we come out and pick those items up. Now, if you just have some small items, can you actually deliver them to the store? Absolutely, and we can, you know, we'll direct you to the front or the back depending upon what you have, and we still issue the same tax deductible slip for everyone, whether it's a pickup or a drop off. Uh, we do recommend smaller items if you can bring them down, that'd be fantastic. But if we're picking up a refrigerator, by all means, we'll take a couple bags of clothing or any other household items that you right. have as well. I'll tell you, it just makes it so convenient. I moved recently and it, it was just so nice to be able to call you all, have the trucks come up on a scheduled day mm -hmm. and the guys were so nice and they were <laughs> volunteers and I tell you, it was just such an easy transition. Mm -hmm. To, to get the items out, know that they're going to to good place and, right. and going to people in our community. But it also was really nice and convenient for me. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of alleviates. Uh, there's a lot of women who their husbands might be working or just family members in general who can't move the larger right. items. So it is nice that we have the opportunity to send out two guys to help get those big items out of your way. Oh, I mean, yeah. we're happy to do it because they're going into our store and, yeah. you know, some people repurpose them and we're able to take good quality merchandise and people don't have to pay that full retail price because it is second hand. Right. So it works all around for everyone. So we're happy to help anyone move things. Well, the volunteers were fabulous. I'm glad to hear it, <laughs> glad to hear it. We have some good people coming to us. Oh, I try to hang on to them. They were <laughs> so easy to get along with. They were so generous and they just really mm -hmm. seemed to be happy to be doing what they were doing. And you know, that just was such a good feeling. That's nice to hear. We try to kind of incorporate, It's there's a lot of, um, tasks going on in the store that may not always be fun so we try to make the day as fun as possible or mix in some fun events sometimes we'll you know do a store beautification day where we do things with logos and painting or just something fun to kind of lighten the day because right. I know the the volunteers and minimal staff we have they work so hard we want to kind of reward them with a little bit of fun in there well it sounds like you do a good job <laughs> we try we try <laughs> 
Tell me more, if you will, about the houses that are taking place and being built on Care, is it Carriage Street? It's Yes, Carriage Road. Carriage Sorry, Road. it's been uh -huh. really exciting. On Monday, we just dedicated a home. It's the um, third home on Carriage Road, and it's to April Braswell, who I've had a chance to work with really closely. Uh, she's actually puts in 300 sweat equity hours when you're in the pipeline to be a homeowner. That's part of the qualifying process. So she's been volunteering not only at the ReStore, but on her own house at construction as well. So for her, I just feel like it's been a long time in the making for her. And it's just like when you see that finished product and, and your family's there and supporters of the community are there and they can just see where everyone's hard work went into oh, a home yes. that you're going to live into. It's just, it brings me back to why I work with Habitat and why I'm here and what our mission's about. And it's just a really great day. That's why I always like to bring our volunteers, staff if we can. Oh, yes. A lot of our contributors, we encourage to come because it's an eye-opening experience to see the finished product yeah, and see the see homeowner yeah. grab those keys. It's just, it's oh, great. Oh, I can't imagine. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, it was a good day. I love dedication days. Well, tell me, how does someone become a homeowner? Well, one of the things that we let people know that's been a common misconception with our program is that the houses are given away for free. And what we say at Habitat is that we think of the homeowner process as a hand up, not a handout. So they are not given away free? No, they actually pay for their home. Um, like I said, they do put in 300 hours of volunteer service. We call it sweat equity, and it's into the affiliate and on construction, so restore and construction. So they're actually spending time building fellow homeowners' homes as well as their own. And then they're also set up with a low interest mortgage payment that they end up paying back. So they're paying for their home just at cost. So it's more affordable for them. And you know, we always make different educational uh, courses available to them for financial purposes in case they're um, concerned about maintenances right. for that. And so it's just encouraging them to be more successful, setting them up to have success in their new home. So we really want it to be a full circle program. And for them, it's a rewarding experience. Wow. Well, you know, and I do believe that's important for the community to know because you Definitely. all work so hard with these folks that are trying to be a part of this home from the volunteers mm -hmm. to the homeowners themselves. And it's good to know a little more details about how it all takes place. Right. <laughs> well, I just, you know, that's important, like from the contributor side for people in our community who are giving right. to the ReStore or to the organization itself. We want them to know, you know, where their contributions are going and what right. it really means. So um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to sure, say that. Sure, sure. Tell me more, if you will, about... As someone in the community, if I want to be involved in the ReStore, if I want to know more about what's happening, how's a way I can get in touch with you all or be in connect? connect well, I'm with glad you. you asked that. One of the things that we started, and this was um, at the the beginning of last year and it's really started to catch on um, we have an email blast list and we do have a little um, station set up in the store if you if you come in we'll be happy to direct anyone towards it but you can put down your email address mm -hmm. and at the end of every month I update that list and what's beautiful about the email blast list is that you can receive our sales calendar for the restore and that gives you all the tidbits events sales discount days you know that we oh, have nice. going on throughout the month um, like for instance in June the week after Father's Day we're gonna be doing some blowout sales in the store surprise sales but at least you know there's a good days to come in and see yeah. what's kind of popping in there so that way if you sign up via email you'll get all those things you'll even get event reminders sometimes we send out the dedication events so it keeps you in touch with what's going on with the affiliate but you also get the sneak peeks on sales and whatnot if you want to know when furniture is going to be you know 50% off right. it'd be good to get on that list so you can see what's what's happening and when it's going to happen. So the best way to do that is to come in the store, mm -hmm. sign up right there at the counter. Yep, right at the counter where Perfect. you would cash out mm -hmm, and we'll get your email address and we'll get you on at the beginning of the following month and you'll start receiving that calendar and Good. That's be great. in the know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you all had a very busy spring. Oh, yes, we did. Can you give us a little quick run through of what you did and how many, how you had all the so many <laughs> folks from CEOs to the women in the community, business women? <laughs> spring very much tends a part. to be a busy time for us. We always receive a lot of collegiate challenges kids who come in on their spring break so that's over the course of like a month and a half we'll have students from various schools um, around the nation coming in and volunteering for a few days or a week that is such a cool program oh the construction oh. team loves it because it's like crazy volunteers all week <laughs> long and they're always so awesome and fun to be around oh, so yeah. that month and a half is like the probably the most exciting time besides dedications and then also the busiest now they are college students from all over the United States mm -hmm. that instead of going out where well, they're spending their spring break building homes homes right here in Goldsboro. Uh, you want to talk about giving back. That's, yeah. I mean, some, I think a lot of people. <laughs> Instead of laying on a beach, exactly. sipping a nice little whatever. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I'm going to come and put on a hard hat. And exactly. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> uh, we also had our CEO build, which is always a great event because we get to meet, greet, get to know a little bit better some of the business owners in, in Goldsboro and Wayne County, and they get to kind of hands-on see what it's yeah, like to nice. put something into the homes, which I think that they enjoy, which was a great event. We do our annual women's build, which I think we talked about last time, uh -huh. and that's over a three-day, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we have a lot of women come out, and they have a really good time. This one especially this year, I feel like we had some good games. We had some great like spa package giveaways from nice. businesses in town that were very generous with their door prizes they wanted to con contribute, and it was just like everyone on site. We did have Lowe's there as well doing some hands-on guided, you know, instructional what have you to show everyone that's the always nice yes. just in case well, we don't, don't have a lot of experience with a hammer exactly i don't want anyone <laughs> or to drill. feel not prepared or like they're gonna maybe yes. hammer a nail through their their thumbs yeah so. that would not be good but the girls did great they actually a lot of the feedback from our construction team was that they got more done than the average day of volunteers so they were Wonderful. empowered they they picked it Wonderful. up and ran with it it was it was a good event does not surprise me i know hey i'm on that <laughs> team too so i take it <laughs> oh that's amazing and that's every spring mm-hmm so maybe next year we have more women come Absolutely. out, more CEOs of companies come out. And <laughs> the be more the merrier for us. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, have we covered pretty much the spectrum of what you wanted to make sure what the community knew about today? Yeah, I just want to encourage a lot of the people in our community, if you don't know anything about the ReStore, you haven't been in, oh, they're missing out. and check us out. I mean, a lot of our customers, we spend time talking about not only the hidden gems for really nice stuff that we get our hands on at the store, but a lot of the items that could be refurbished. I know that a lot of us live ladies are Pinterest um, oh, crazies yeah. right now. Man, the so, Pinterest projects could go crazy <laughs> in the restore. We're trying to play around with some ourselves right now, but there's some great oh, merchandise smart. to be had and very, very well priced. So please come check us out. For sure. That's the place to go. I tell you, it is a little <laughs> hidden gem in, in, in Goldsboro, that's for sure. And you all are right there on, what's the street? 124 East Mulberry. We're right off of John Street downtown. There you go, right beside JoJo's. <laughs> there you go, JoJo's Cafe. <laughs> that's Get right. a coffee and then come in and buy some furniture. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bailey. Thanks You're always a me, delight Kim. to come in and love hearing about Habitat and what all it does in our community. Thank you. So if you're interested in getting involved in the Habitat for Humanity, you've seen the website. On, on the running on the screen. They'd love to have you check it out or give them a call or stop by and see them. Thank you so much for being with us and this is what's happening in your community. Joining me in the studio today is Sergeant Paige Lerner for here from Crime Stoppers Wayne County. She's here to tell us how you can help us solve this week's Crime of the Week. Good morning. Welcome back. Thank you for having me again. Can you tell us some details about how the community can help us solve this crime? Yeah. Um, this week I wanted to ask for everybody's help in locating a um, person that's out there that's got some outstanding warrants. And basically this gentleman's name is Elfre Contreras and he's a Hispanic male. Um, he is approximately 57 years old and he has two outstanding warrants. One is for a felony probation violation, but the other one is for injury to personal property. And basically what he did or what he's being um, accused of doing is cutting off his GPS monitoring device. So we would like to get our hands back on him and um, serve these warrants. So we're hoping that the public will take a look at his picture and uh, give us some calls on, on how we can locate him. Okay, so if people see him out in the community, what do you want them to do exactly? Um, we want them to call. You know, obviously he, he's got a felony warrant, so they can call 911 for that. Okay. If they call and they're looking at him, what they'll do is just turn him over to a different line. But that'll, that'll help us get the officers to, the, to where he's at right then. Um, just try to remember what he's wearing, where he's at, if he's driving a car, if he's just standing somewhere, just um, get a visual of him. and Take give some the, notes, some de mental details. There you go. And uh, give the dispatch a call. And if it's information like, um, you know, hey, they, they know where he might be sleeping at night or where they think he might have gone, I, you know, they can give me a call at the Crime Stoppers line um, at that 735-2255 number. So it's just if you're seeing him right that moment. Right. You call 911. That's right. And if you're not seeing him in person right then, you call the Crime Stoppers or either text right. the Crime Stoppers number. Yep. Yep. And and obviously that that is a felony charge, and so that would make them eligible for a cash reward. So um, it's kind of a win-win situation. And this is an anonymous. That's right. Program. So we don't know who you are if you're calling right. or texting. Obviously, um, every time I like to just remind people, it's you know when they call, my phone is blocked, so I can't see their name or their number. And if they text me, it's the same thing, set mm -hmm. up the same way. When they text, I can't see the phone number it's coming from. They can give me the information through a text, and we can still set up a code name or a code number for them. Mm -hmm. If they're not comfortable with calling, we can still do that just through text messages also. 
So you find do every effort to try to work it out and make it as easy as possible right. for the caller. That's right. Can we put his picture up one more time? And if you'll tell us what his name is again, if you it's don't mind. It's Elfrey Contreras. He goes by the nickname of Cuba. Okay. And he's about what age? He's 57 years old. We've got a last known address for him at being 510 Third Street here in Goldsboro. So some of the people in the community might live in that area and be familiar with right, him. Right, right. Yeah. So if you see this individual, if you're seeing him in person, call 911. If you just have information about his whereabouts, call Crime Stoppers or text. You may be eligible for a cash reward. Thank you so much and help us solve this week's Crime of the Week. And we are back. Bailey does a good job. Bailey I'm Harrell from yeah. Habitat's Restore, great job. She just throws it all out there. She's very good at that, mm -hmm. presenting her program. For sure. Excellent. All right. What else is going on? The fourth Monday of every month, Yes. those who help the elderly or those in need, East Point Geriatric Adult Mental Health Specialty Team. Goodness is offering caregiver classes at the Seeger Senior Center on East Ash Street. Now the classes are the fourth Monday of every month, beginning at 5.30, going for an hour. These are hour-long classes. They're geared for those who are caring for or have an interest in the geriatric population. Classes are free. One hour of continuing ed education will be given for each participant at the end of the class. Now June's class will be held on June 23rd. That's this month. June 23rd. Yes, it's the only it is. time there will be a 23rd this month. <laughs> and that begins at 5.30. Uh, June's topic will be physiology of aging. The physiology of aging. There's no charge for this or age requirement for this class. Everybody's invited to attend if you have an interest in this area. If you have any questions, call Aaron, 705-1785-705-1785. Well, Wayne, let's talk a little bit about the Goldsboro MPO. How do you spell that? G M P O. G M P O. Oh, oh, I got it. And it, it stands now. for Goldsboro Metropolitan Organization. Oh, okay. Tell me what you think that might would mean. Metropolitan Planning Organization sounds like uh, they're dealing with perhaps uh, infrastructure, perhaps uh, yep. population trends, perhaps uh, uh, the, the way to move people around the city. Is it close? Is Very that, good. Oh, well, Check. You know, hey, I read a book once. You know what I mean? <laughs> you uh, did good. Uh, thank you. Well, that, what we're doing is the Goldsboro Metropolitan Organization, that's exactly what they're doing, is wanting to find out from residents here in Goldsboro mm -hmm. what you're interested in seeing happen and transform over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years oh, yeah. regarding transportation, cycles, yeah. rail, uh, of course, your regular roads and streets. And they're wanting information from the community as to what your ideas are, what your concerns are. And they're offering you a couple different tools to give this information back and this feedback. Mm -hmm. One is you can attend a public meeting on Tuesday, June the 24th. Mm -hmm. That's, that'll be at City Hall. It's open to the public. We invite you to come, listen, talk, give your ideas, talk one-on-one -on -one with folks that are in the know, that are doing the planning. Right. They want to hear from you, our community. And that'll be from 4 until 7 p.m. It's just an open time. You can come and go as you please. And that's in City Hall Annex on the second floor. So anybody can go to this? Anybody can come to this. It's open any? to the public completely. Oh, okay. Any resident. Mm -hmm. you know, Tuesday, June 24th. If you think back, you mentioned 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. Yes. That was 04, and then that was 99 was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago was 1994. And then if you think back where you were in 1994, and you think about what was going on in the city of Goldsboro at that time, you see a tremendous amount of change oh, has already taken place. So where are we going to be 20 years from now? That's right. In 2034. And this is the time, I know, this is the time for you to have your input. That's it. You can come and talk with them at the public meeting. Mm -hmm. Once again, Tuesday, June the 24th, 4 to 7 p.m. at City Hall Annex. Or, and it can also be and, mm -hmm. you can fill out a survey on the city's website where they're asking you questions. What would you like to see happen? What changes would you like to see? Would you like to see more greenways? Would you like to find out more about bringing rail back to Goldsboro, how it could affect our community. Oh, yeah. If you go to the city's website at goldsboronc.gov, you'll see right on the homepage information about Goldsboro MPO. Click on that, it'll take you straight to the survey. You know what I like about this is the fact that they're involving the community in this. They're mm -hmm. not just throwing it out there and doing it. You have a chance to be mm -hmm. a part of this. And what I like about it is, you know, like when Gerald was in the other day. Right. 
they actually listen to you. They you're a part of the planet. Yes, you, you can be a part of planning the way Goldsboro and Wayne County grows. That's right. Wouldn't that be, isn't that, just think about that. Think about it. you can be a part of this helping to make the decisions about the direction, the mm -hmm. trends, and, uh, and what will be better for the city and the county. That's exactly right. That's, and that's he great. will be on, um, a gentleman who will be representing the Goldsboro MPO will be on the show, I believe it is next Monday. Oh, good. Okay. Telling more about it. Oh, that's great. But visit the city's website, goldsboronc.gov, to find out more about how you can be a part of the Goldsboro MPO in the planning of our community. All right. That is excellent. And on that note, yes. we're going to see you again tomorrow. Yes, we'll we are. We'll be back tomorrow with the whatever this is, and I hope you enjoy <laughs> it today, and I hope you enjoy it tomorrow. I know I'm having a good time. Me too, Wayne. All right. All right. So uh, join us again tomorrow for Wayne Goldsboro Television. Until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best, and this is what's happening in your community.